Aloha everybody, this is Wyatt with Michael Lab Solutions and today we're making bulk substrate to put in your mono tubs. The recipe we're going to be showing you today is for our portobello mushrooms. This is good for a variety of agaricuses, white button mushrooms, creminis, and any manure loving um, species. So here are the materials we will be using today to make our bulk substrate. We are making a recipe of horse poo, cocoa coir, vermiculite, and gypsum. So here's our cocoa coir. It comes in big bricks like this. You can get it at any uh, hydroponics store or garden store or uh, even like uh, pet places have it. And it comes in these hard bricks and then what you want to do is break it up and soak it until you get it to a nice, you know, fluffy cocoa coir. Over here we have uh, horse poo. You want to use dried horse poo that's been sun bleached and uh, not wet at all. This stuff has already been broken up into a powder. To do all our mixing we use a drill with a paddle on it and uh, we you put our stuff in a, a square tub like this and anchor it to the ground with uh, blocks and you can um, paddle it inside there it makes it really easy and you can do a lot at one time. Here we have some measuring buckets that uh, we'll be using to measure out our ingredients. Over here we have uh, gypsum in the jar and then a big bag of vermiculite. All this stuff is super cheap you can get it at any garden store and uh, it's readily available and you just need a good source of horse poo, dried horse poo. So the first thing you want to do is get your water boiling. This is the water you'll be adding to your substrate to get the correct field capacity. The advantage of using hot water is that it gets your substrate already up to a high enough temperature. So then when you uh, actually put it in your pressure cooker to pasteurize it, uh, it's not going to take as long and it's already you know, at a pretty good like 130, 140 depending on how quick you're able to do it. So for this recipe we're going to use two parts of manure to one part coir to one part vermiculite and about five to ten percent um, volume of uh, gypsum. So I'm gonna fill up, it's just easy on uh, my bucket here, I'm gonna do eight quarts of manure then I'm gonna put it up to twelve quarts of cocoa coir and then add another four quarts to make it 16 quarts of vermiculite. And then I'm gonna measure out about, you know, 5% would be 0.8 uh, of a uh, quart. We're gonna do about a half a quart of uh, gypsum here. So here we are, we're adding our horse poo. I'm gonna get it up to eight quarts. Now you wanna use horse poo that's already been um, pulverized, mixed up, and uh, is fine. The best way to do this is with a paddle mixer on the end of a drill. You want to use a corded drill, they're a bit stronger. Again, you don't want to use any wet poo. You want it all to be dry. This stuff's quite stinky. If there's some little bigger chunks in there, it's okay because you're going to paddle it again when you're mixing up all your ingredients. Sometimes it's good to wear a dust mask with this. Now we're going to add it up to 12 with cocoa coir here. So now we're going to add our verm. Now vermiculite will help retain moisture. Okay, now we're going to add a little bit of gypsum. Do about half a jar. It's the powdered gypsum. It goes a long way. That's quite a bit. We're going to take our bucket a measuring bucket, we're going to mix it in into our mixing container. Now we take our trusty 
panel mixer. And it just goes slow. You just want to mix all the dry material together. And you're going to add water and get it to feel capacity. It really helps to have your container uh, nailed down to the ground or blocked in so it's not moving around on you when you're trying to paddle mix it. So next you want to go through and kind of hand mix it, make sure it's mixed up really well. And you definitely want to take out like any leaves and stuff like that. You know, you don't really need that and rocks from the horse manure. And you really want to make sure to break up the big clumps of horse manure in there. So just go through it for a little bit and clean it up. And you can eyeball if it looks like you need a little bit more or something, some more vermiculite or something, you know, just toss a little bit more in there. Okay, so our water is boiled and it's super hot and now we're going to add it into our dry mixture. And we're only going to add a little bit at a time and we're going to keep testing it by squeezing it and getting it to field capacity. Now, when you're doing this, you'll be able to tell when you reach field capacity by if you give it a real hard squeeze, you'll get a couple drips out of it. Um, but otherwise if you give it a light squeeze, it's not really going to drip and you're going to want some really um, Thermal gloves when you're doing this with hot water as uh, the mixture is going to be super hot. So um, Be very careful when you're adding the hot water and uh, do it slowly and just be safe Add a little bit of water here And we're going to mix it up a little bit and then we're going to test it and you can kind of tell you know after you do this a lot enough times uh, when you're getting close to field capacity so it's cooled down enough to where i can squeeze it by hand and i'm just going to give it a really hard squeeze and there's no really drips coming out so it's a little bit dry still and I'm gonna add a little bit more water mix it up again and then retest it but I'm gonna go really slow just adding a little bit of water and making sure to mix it really well and get it evenly distributed we don't want it becoming too wet um, if you do you could always add a little bit more uh, coir or vermiculite or manure um, but uh, we want to get it to perfect field capacity so I'll add a little bit more water and then I'll show you guys another example. So once you think you have it to field capacity, take a clump of it, just a handful, and give it a good squeeze. You should see a few little drops come out when you squeeze it really hard. But otherwise, when you do it softly, you know, not much water's coming out. And that's a pretty good field capacity. So I think our substrate's here. Next part, we're going to put it in our bags and then we're going to pasteurize it in our large pressure cooker. So now that we have our substrate all mixed up and uh, to proper feel capacity, we're going to take our autoclavable bags. These are the large size. I think they're 21 by 10 with a 5 inch gusset. Uh, these are one of the larger bags. And so we're just going to fill it up, um, you know, to about below the filter patch and we're gonna see how they fit into our pressure cooker. So you just wanna start scooping it into the bag and filling it up. Fit quite a bit in these large bags. There's a lot of places online you can get these bags. Um, I buy most of mine either on eBay. You can get some really good deals or if you're buying in big bulk, you go to Unicorn Bags and uh, they have some good deals when you're buying quite a bit. But if you just need a couple, eBay or a lot of other mycology stores will have them for you know, a decent price. So now that our bag is full, we're gonna uh, kind of seal it up up here. You could either use an impulse sealer or you can do some tie wire or whatever works. And the next step is we're gonna take this and put it into uh, our boiling water that's in the pressure cooker. Now we're not gonna put the lid on the pressure cooker. We're not trying to pressurize it or sterilize it. We're just trying to heat the bag up, the substrate up to a pasteurization temperature between 160 and 180. You don't wanna go over 180 
because it, it will kill a lot of the beneficial microbes that you'll have in here and invite more contamination. So let's go over to the pressure cooker and see how our bag fits in and see how many we can fit in. Uh, it all depends on how big your pressure cooker is and so you'll get a hang of it after you do it once or twice. So here we are, we have our substrate in the bags and inside our pressure cooker in water. We're going to heat it up to between 140 and 180 and we're going to leave it at that temperature for about one to three hours. We want the inside of the bags to reach of at least 140 so we make sure that the whole substrate is getting pasteurized. Um, for our mixture in our tub, we did a little bit over two buckets, so about 32 quarts. So we were able to fit a little over 32 quarts of substrate in three extra large mushroom bags and they all fit in our uh, pressure cooker here. So now what you want to do is weight down the bags to make sure that uh, they're in the water but because these have filter patches on we don't want water getting in there and messing with our field capacity. So we're gonna lay this over it and then we're gonna weight it down then we're gonna bring this whole thing over to our cooker and we're gonna put it back under flame and we're gonna monitor the temperature inside the bags. So we have the lid on our pressure cooker but we don't have it tightened down. You wanna be able to take it up and check the temperature and uh, we just have it on so it will um, heat up quicker inside and the thermal mass will get um, hotter faster. All right, so now we have our pressure cooker on flame and we're gonna heat it up and we're gonna monitor the temperature inside the bags. Once they get about 140 degrees, we're going to shut off the flame uh, and the heat will keep rising inside the bags from uh, the heat of the water. You don't want to let it get you know, too hot because it will keep rising. So you just want to keep monitoring it and uh, keep a close eye on it. And like I said, once it gets up to about 140 degrees, we can shut off the flame and let the temperature climb uh, to about 160 or something for another hour or so. So uh, we'll come back in a few hours and uh, we'll see how everything's doing.